What's up, everybody? This is Whiskey in the Six. I'm Rob. Mic'd up, ready to go today. Hopefully, that limits the echo. We're going to find out very shortly. Today, I'm reviewing the Octomore 10 year old. Okay, this one came out in 2016. It's only the second release. They did a few of these. I think it's up to four now. I bought this for about 220 bucks, maybe a little bit less. Uh, not that long ago, okay? And the reason why I purchased this was because the 11.1, 2, and 3 came out and I was just really upset about the pricing. And I noticed that a store had this as a Dusty on the shelf. So I picked a couple of these up. Really happy I did. I should have done it a long time ago. 57.3% ABV. Like I said, it's 10 years old. This is a beauty. The new ones are about to come out. The new 12.3 is gonna be a sherry cask influenced Octomore. First in the core range. I'm excited for it, but I'm a little bit upset about what I'm looking at as far as pricing goes. We're talking about the mid 300s Canadian. It just keeps going up and not rightly so. We're talking about three to seven year old whiskey here. The bottle's beautiful, the presentation is beautiful. And unfortunately, that's getting in the way of people actually trying the liquid. I think Octomore needs to rethink their presentation because I feel that if they reduce the cost there, they can justifiably bring down the cost of the whole thing uh, and they need to. It's, it's that time. They're creeping into a category that they do not belong in with a three and a five-year-old whiskey. The turnaround is crazy. The amount of five-year-old whiskey that a company can produce after being open as long as Brook Laddie, it just doesn't make sense. They need to figure it out. The pricing is getting way too high. It was getting way too high for a long time. Now it's unreasonably high. So I think they need to rethink things. They got to go back to the way it was. That's my little non-whiskey rant rant for tonight. But to this liquid, which is actually really good. Okay, so 167 ppm. Not a record breaker by their standards, but definitely a lot. Although nosing this, I wouldn't say that this is any more peated than your Kilhoman Saneg or some of the stuff that I've had in recent years. Again, I really want to know if there can be an experiment done on what's detectable to the human nose and, and palate when it comes to peat. Um, there's got to be a level where it just becomes undetectable. But Beautiful barbecue smoke on the nose, nice sweetness, some nice like hay kind of notes, like farm hay, hay bundles. Really nice. Definitely sweet on the palate. So there is some heat. I've had Octomores that are not as hot, which they would use as their argument for why some of their stuff is so expensive. Um, there is heat here, <clears throat> but it's nice sweetness to follow. Beautiful smoke. It's not overly smoky. Probably one of the least um, smoke tasting or smoke smelling Octomores that I've had. Second sip was much less heat on it. Palette probably need a little bit of acclimatization. So Grenache Blanc casks, that's what this one's aged in. Uh, fresh bourbon as well, probably finished in the Grenache Blanc casks, which is a French white wine. And like I said, each sip is getting easier and easier. A little bit more peat detected on the palate than on the nose. Nice charred notes on the back end. Definitely um, <clears throat> like fire roasted ribs almost. It's kind of what I get. Some nice sweet honey barbecue sauce. I really like this. I think this is excellent whiskey. I would definitely buy it again. But the price now is unreasonable in my opinion. 
I'd pay $200 for this again. I'd pay $200 for any of the expressions Canadian because I think they are worth that much. But when you start creeping into the $250, $300 range, it just gets a little bit too absurd for me. And really, let's be honest, they all kind of taste the same. They all have very similar profiles. They all have that heavy amount of peat, their cast strength. It's just a money grab, in my opinion. And in its truest form, when you're talking about super young whiskey that can be turned over every five years. Um, I love Octomore, I love Brook Laddie, but I really don't love what's happening with their pricing. Every time I've tried this, it's been great. I haven't had a bad experience with this one. Despite the pricing now and all that other stuff, this was well priced for the time. It was five years older than the average uh, Octomore that came out at that time. This one's gonna be an 88, 89 for me. So really good stuff. I would definitely buy it again. I think it's well-rounded. It's got really nice sweetness. That's probably coming from that wine cask influence. But I find that younger whiskeys in general tend to have a really nice sweetness to them. This one's no exception. Like I said, 88, 89. That's it for me, guys. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you really like the video, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. You can click the bell to get notifications for when I do release a video. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and you can support this channel on Patreon. Cheers. Mm -hmm.